Hi, Pat the Podcast Edit here. Anyone that runs a business will tell you it's not easy getting yourself out there. But after being commissioned to share some marketing wisdom with a local company, business founder Dan Knowlton wanted to share some of that same wisdom with you anchors at home. It was a business that didn't have a huge budget, and I thought we could do an episode sharing for, for similar anchors what they could be doing that's creative to get a good return on investment from whatever small or little budget they have. Now, whether you're a lone freelancer or the founder of an independent startup, you'll hear about actionable steps anyone can take to get all eyes on your business on a shoestring budget in whatever industry you're in. There is a lot of good ideas that anchors can hopefully try from this episode. And if you want to sell tiles, you've hit the jackpot, haven't you, today? Right, let's dive in. This is episode 156 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. If I've got no budget, what creative marketing ideas would you suggest I try out, Dan? It's interesting you ask that, Lloyd, because this week I had one of the most interesting meetings I've ever had with a business. And I, <laughs> and this sounds really weird, I think I shared some really great ideas and advice with them. <laughs> Should we check with them if no, they think that? No, but genuinely, I, I got out of it thinking, bloody hell, they were some good ideas. And I thought... Um, it was it was a business that didn't have a huge budget, mm -hmm. um, and I thought we could do an episode sharing for for similar anchors who may want to get great results in their marketing but not have much of a budget. What they could be doing that's creative to get a good return on investment from whatever small or little budget they have. Nice. And you said you found it was one of the most interesting meetings you've had. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they found it interesting, or were they? Did they look quite bored? They. I think they found it interesting. I probably found it more interesting <laughs> than them. But no, th there were some ideas that they were like. We've got to do that. Let's do that. And I, uh, some nice. more, there's some more out there ideas. Yeah. Um, but you just to give a bit of context, <clears throat> sorry, just to give a bit of context, they are a, uh, a company that sells kind of tiling products. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, when I asked them, what was their big differentiator? Cause there's like tops tiles, tile giant, that kind of thing. All these big tile boys. Yeah. So it's like, as a new business, how on earth do you compete with those? Mm. Their number one differentiator was price okay like they they said they showed me various examples of like for like product what they could do uh and what they could sell them for for like 30 to 60 percent less than these big players were selling product right. for because they've got much higher costs and things yeah and i guess those those like tile giant and top style the ones that you might have heard of or you might find like on a retail park in your local area or whatever mm. they because they know they're the only big tile place in your area, they're going to probably charge quite a lot because they're going to get the business. Yeah. A lot of people won't shop around. They just go, oh, there's that tile place. Yeah. Mm. And it made me like speaking to them when they're like, yeah, we're like 30 for like for like products than the, the, the world's leading brands. We're like 30 to 60% less. Mm. It really got me thinking creatively like, okay, so once we get people through the door, that that's the challenge, like reaching enough people yeah. in a very cost effective way to get them through the door. Um, and I think even if you're listening to this and your differentiator isn't price, because for most businesses, mm -hmm. that's not their differentiator. Some of the ideas that we're going to share in this episode are really creative and can help you communicate whatever you want to communicate in terms of what your differentiator is. Yeah, I think for most businesses, they've got the same um, kind of things that they need to achieve as this business that Dan was talking to, especially businesses that don't have much of a marketing budget. Like they've got to get the attention of a group of people. Yeah. They've got to convince them to go somewhere, whether that's online or offline, convince them to take some kind of action. And then if they do buy something, then you've got to, the third thing is how do I get this person to spend more with us and buy stuff regularly from exactly. us? It's like, those three things, most businesses are trying to achieve very similar mm. things. Attention, get them to take some kind of action. How can we get them to take that action more times in the future? Yeah. And my, like uh, in line with that, my, my kind of top level advice for them was try lots of different things in a small way to see 
what gets some return and then scale up the things that are working and scale down the things that aren't. Mm. And that sounds incredibly basic, but I think I've mentioned this on a few podcasts before. Lots of marketers try and overcomplicate everything. Yeah. Like try and think of these very complex ways of doing things. Really, if you think of what it's all about, it's what you've just said. Yeah. Those three points. You can use as much marketing jargon, like business terminology as you want, but you just need to get someone's attention and get them to do something. And then once you've done that, can I get them to do it more? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, can I just share one of my one of my favorite uh, ideas I gave them? I know we're jumping ahead of it, yeah. but yeah. Um, so I call this the Bruce Willis Die Hard Sandwich Board approach. Okay. So they said they said to me when I met them like we can't like we can't believe it. We need to get more people through the door because we can sell like for like products thirty to sixty percent less. So we need to get tradespeople hearing about us so that they can come to us and they'll realize they're going to save loads of money for exactly the same product. So I was mm -hmm. like, right, with minimal budget, what could they do creatively to get in front of tradespeople to basically shout at them and say, by the way, you're buying this mm. for 36% more expensive than you could. So I don't know if you've seen the Die Hard film with Bruce Willis. Uh, do you know what? People are probably going to slate me, but I don't actually know if I have. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not going to... Um, Tay looks offended behind the camera. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to exactly explain what the sign said because it's very rude. But basically in the film, Bruce Willis has like a sandwich board on him mm -hmm. that says something very rude and it attracts a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. that, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. People who have seen the film will know what it said and what it is. But my idea to this tiling company was to, uh, to it was a two-pronged approach. One, get someone to stand outside tile giant uh, and tops tiles with a big sandwich board, something like witty or creative on it that basically says, you're buying this for 36% more expensive, go around the corner to this address mm -hmm. and we'll get it uh, for cheaper. But it needs to be like more witty and creative. Something like um, Thursday, the dating app. Have you seen some of the things they do in London? Yeah. They have like a really wit. They, they took like a, a camel into London, which was questionable in terms of animal uh, cruelty, mm -hmm. but it had a sign like, oh, it's hump day. Right. Download our dating app. Like it needs to be yeah. witty and creative. Yeah, and abuse animals. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no, no. That, I gave that example, but oh, I, we don't have to do that. For though. legal reasons, don't get okay. animals in London. Okay. Um, and then we don't have to do that. No, you don't. <laughs> and the second prong to that two pronged approach was have a PR strategy. So contact, mm -hmm. like it needs to be crazy enough. Like you need to get someone dressed up in something weird. Mm -hmm outside top style so that whenever trades people go there, they're looking at it and thinking, Oh, I should try this place out. Yeah. Um, so that was my weird kind of, you know, all you need is the cost to, for a sandwich board. Yeah. Or is it called a sandwich board? Like a big bit of cardboard or whatever Yeah. to write something witty on it. And with a call to action about how you're mm -hmm. cheaper um, and to contact local news outlets and tell them that that's what you're going to be doing, that they should tell yeah. it, do a story on it. Yeah. Well, my, one of my ideas um, links to that, the kind of trying to get stories written about Go it that on. kind of thing. I think local PR for these sort of businesses is a really good idea. I think what what people don't realise if they haven't done kind of work with PR before. What is PR, Lloyd? Um, PR. <laughs> so, <laughs> press release. Uh should I say more words? No, no, just, I guess, so for people who don't have a clue, it's yeah, like, it's, it's basically get it's getting people um, writing, like press writing articles or blogs uh, about, about yeah. something you want them to write about, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of tactics and strategies of how can I get the local newspaper to write about Actually my give business? A shit and, how mm. can I get um, this specific blog to write about my product? Because I sell cameras and this is this camera blog. Um, and so basically reaching loads of people in a specific audience through these stories. And I think small businesses could really get a lot of benefit from this. And I think a lot of them think, well, there's nothing. I haven't got a good story, a new story mm. about me, but I really think you have. So I, I would suggest for uh, the business you're talking about, Dan, get in a room for half a day and just be brainstorming creating stories around their business with What's sandwich the story boards. with sandwich boards. not with sandwich boards okay. but they could do sandwich boards if you want but so for example obviously i didn't have time to put a huge amount i, I didn't spend half a day but yeah. the story could be local tiling supplier gives free pizza to every customer right 
I mean, I that, that's kind of hooky. I, I think that's a story that the local <laughs> lo- local news <laughs> yeah. will probably write about. Wouldn't be on national TV. Right? <laughs> it wouldn't be on national TV. No, <laughs> wouldn't be on that. But they, this, breaking this news. business is looking for local. Yeah. So that you're going to get your local newspapers going. They're giving free pizzas every <laughs> right. Yeah. And like in reality, that. what you need to do is you just need to have some kind of offer behind it. Of if you spend hundred quid on tiles, you get a five pound just eat voucher, mm. and just make sure there's a pizza for less than five pounds. <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? Like work out what the story is, and then yeah. work out Anger. okay, well, how much will this cost us to actually make this happen? Or it, or the the thing is like uh, on the last Friday of every month you have loads of pizzas and if people come in then they get pizza <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean like slowly going downhill actually, like, no, we no, offer no. Uh, there's a but, pizza shop 10 miles away <laughs> that that will chuck a quid in your face and you can go I mean. and like, get you've got to get creative with the story and actually it's very easy then to do whatever you need yeah. to, to another idea could be uh, and this again I'm not saying it's gonna gonna get in the the Sunday times or whatever are you ready for this breaking news guys <laughs> Planet Tiling Supplier helping plumbers make more money. <laughs> but they, like a businessy story behind yeah. it. I'm just yeah. like something like that. I'm thinking they get a local accountant, a solicitor and a banker to t- attend like an hour long networking thing mm. with tilers. And they're basically going to give them advice and on the things yeah. that they may not know about. And it's this initiative that's going to help local tilers mm. They get a little, a, positive a little story written about them in the mm. business section of the local newspaper that they're doing this. They they've taken the cost of doing this event and they're helping local plumbers and yeah. tilers. Like, and then at least you're going to get the word of mouth of, oh, do you see that? T- there's that tile in place, so you can get speak to like accountants and stuff for free. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, bloody hell! I tried to speak to one. They charged me at 150 quid an hour. Bloody hell! Yeah, we just need those conversations yeah. going. So I know. Like I said, they're not really exciting. But it needs a, yeah, it needs we're talk. talking about some a business with like little to no budget and that might want to attract local yeah. customers. Like there's much bigger things you can do with bigger budgets and you can yeah. get really creative and that kind of thing. But I do think every business has a story. Like it might be like we we did this. It took no budget and took about two hours of someone's time. We had a report on our um carbon footprint and that kind of thing and the what we do with our positive impact plan and reducing carbon emissions and that kind of thing and the the headline of the report was basically that Knowlton are a pioneer in the SME sustainability space so we just took that and we wrote a press release around the fact that we were called that in a report we literally got on tv and we one of the first on, ones we yeah. did i personally sent that press release i sent five emails we got a local news story in um, like one of the local papers and we got on a local TV station. Yeah. So if you think that took two hours of me writing a press release and then sending it five times, yeah. probably less than two hours. That sounds like a very unproductive. Yeah. Um, but every business does have a story if you think creatively. Yeah, I love that. So the kind of PR coming up with a good story, letting local news outlets know. Yeah. To get the word out there. I like and that. And you can just, by the way, you don't need to be a PR expert. Just Google press release template. And, and then the just blanks. adapt it. Fill in the blank. That's yeah. all you need. Like, I think that's a good point because anchors may be listening. Oh, I'm not a yeah. PR expert. Marketers make it sound more difficult, but really Google press release template. Yeah. Send it on the forms of the, or, or find emails of the people, the publications you want to get it in. Yeah. And there, there are always emails and contact forms on those publications because they want yeah. still people to send stories to them. Have you heard of the low-hanging fruit approach, Lloyd, that I'm about to share? Actually, my friend my friend James has particularly low-hanging fruit. Okay. <laughs> he definitely does. I've seen that fruit hanging quite low. Um, so the low-hanging fruit approach. <laughs> for anchors listening who are looking for, again, next to no budget or free approach to, to drumming up business mm-hmm. is capitalizing on the network you've built over time. Mm -hmm. So one of the key things I got from this meeting I had with this uh, tiling company or supplier was they were like, yeah, we've literally been tilers for, it was something crazy, like 30 years or something. Mm -hmm. We've got a huge network of other tilers that trust us and uh, really understand the industry. Um, Yeah, so that we've built up this network. And I was like, right, 
one of the small things you should be testing is tapping into that network is coming up with a pro an approach to contact all of those people in your network to try mm. and get them to try your business as a supplier compared to yeah. tops tiles um taking it one step further because because they were sort of like oh yeah we were thinking about calling up a couple of the folks mm. we've known over the years i was like come up with a some kind of structured approach to have an enticing offer for them and i don't mean call mm. up your mate and try and sell them something it's like have an enticing offer so it could be like you said the free pizza mm. thing it could be you know 50 percent off your first order mm. it could be something else that you're offering for them to come and try and then and then create that list of your of, of people in your network who are in the target market and then schedule a couple of hours each day to call everyone up in that list with that enticing offer and in, communicate in an interesting way hi dave We've got this new th we've got this new company where we're supplying tiling products mm. for sixty percent less than Tile Giant. If you come and give a, come and try us out, we'll give you a free box of tiles, a free mm. bag of adhesive, or whatever it is. Yeah. Something enticing enough. Call enough people and have an enticing enough offer. You'll get people. It, it will achieve that first of the three steps that you mentioned. Yeah. Getting awareness, get the attention, and yeah. the attention, and getting them to come and try your business yeah. out. That's the kind of the. And we did this when we started out. We we uh, like from looked at our, our network and who we'd been networking with mm -hmm. and things and thought who could we help the most and then yeah. tapped into that you talking about an enticing offer makes me think of something with my next idea Ooh, for yeah. marketing with little to no budget this isn't no budget it's a little budget yeah. and i actually think this this is something that uh, small businesses often waste a lot of money on yeah so if you do it wrong you're gonna waste money Go on. but um local facebook and instagram ads mm. so this is something a lot of people go oh god bloody spent 500 quid on that got nothing yeah so don't do that <laughs> relatable listen to this first um you really need to make sure you're communicating something that your customers actually are going to give a shit about so so many small businesses would so say for this tiling new tiling supplier yeah they'd create an image or get someone to create an image saying new tiling shop open now and they put opening times and the address and then they go well we need to get the word out yeah put 250 quid behind that yeah. and they boost the post on facebook so it's going to 95 yeah. percent of people who will never buy tiles and also even people who buy tiles do not give a shit yeah, an yeah. image saying Congrats. we've got a tile shop <laughs> expect to be able to go oh well done mate great can yeah. i come it's yeah. like no, there's scroll straight past no that. one gives a shit about that. So I would say if you've heard before people say, Oh no, waste of time, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, they never work. Mostly it's because people are doing stuff like that and it that genuinely yeah. won't work. But make sure you have something that people actually give a shit about. Such a good point. So I would personally do this with organic social media. I would be creating Facebook and Instagram posts. Um and let's you'll probably put Seven or eight posts out there, you'll get a like from your mum yeah, and your mate. Yeah. And that's a sign at the moment. No one really gives a shit about that. Yeah. Sorry. And then you'll get one where you say, oh, we've, uh, on Fridays, we're cooking burgers outside the shop. <laughs> I love your food related. Yeah, sorry. It's <laughs> better make there. a restaurant, a tiling restaurant. Yeah, tiling <laughs> restaurant. But it could be anything. But pizza. I'm pizza. just saying there's going to be a pattern. So on social media, you go, it's bloody burgers and tiles <laughs> afternoon again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, uh, classic, and tiles. classic B and T afternoon, <laughs> burgers and tiles. And then you'll notice it gets 18 likes and oh. gets 24 comments from local plumbers <laughs> going, you headed to B and T this Friday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously that's a shit idea. But I'm just saying, <laughs> Look, you need, you need, the, you need the, to identify yeah. in, with organic social media what people give the a shit theory about. Theory is there, Lloyd. Yeah. Genuinely, like, and I'm laughing at you. Yeah. <laughs> you bees and teas, burgers served on tiles. Um, yeah. But <laughs> but you like you've hit the nail on the head. There is a, definitely a good lesson to learn from this. The point of not just running an ad that's like we've got a tiling shop. It's like thinking yeah. what do tilers who go to stores like top styles to buy tiles what yeah. do they give a shit about is it customer service is it price is it burgers burger? <laughs> could be so an enticing offer that, that yeah. we encourage them so to go there test it out with orga organic social media once you've got something you're like oh people actually care about this yeah then test it out and put 50 pounds behind it targeting people in 
uh, plumbing and tiling yeah. and bathroom fitting and kitchen fitting. This actually is actually in line with one of the things, the kind of ideas that they shared. Um, because there, there, there's a couple of challenges here. There's one, there's getting the attention and getting people to to change their behavior from, you know, they've gone to Top Tiles for 15 yeah. years. Yeah. Why would they change their behavior? Even if it is a bit cheaper, they're just used to going and seeing yeah. Sarah, who works at yeah. Top Tiles. Does Sarah have burgers though? Sarah doesn't have burgers. So you need an enticing enough offer or reason mm. for them to to try you out. But the second thing is um, uh, about ensuring they come back. Because mm -hmm. if they come to your tiling place and they save 20%, but it's a much shitter experience, mm -hmm. worse customer service. You don't really know what you're talking about when it comes yeah. to tiles. They're going to think I saved five quid, but it was much shitter. So yeah. it's really thinking strategically. What can you do to keep them coming back? So I mm -hmm. suggested one, they need some kind of data capture, mm -hmm. capturing the, it could be a competition or something, capturing the email addresses and the contact details of the people who are yeah. coming to their store. So they could do some kind of like follow up mm -hmm. email drip campaign, whether mm -hmm. it's talking about the offers that are on this week mm -hmm. or um, or sharing educational videos because one of the guys really knows what he's talking about when it comes to mm -hmm. tiling. Um, so, so it's really important to think, how are you getting that repeat business? What are you getting, what are you doing to get them to come back? It yeah. could be you get an extra patty in yeah. your B's and T's on a yes. Friday if you, if you use the code in the email. Yeah, then they'll be there going, <laughs> oh, you got a single patty over mate. <laughs> yeah. I've got triple over here because <laughs> I've signed up to the email list. They said about an, an interesting idea to do with a lot of, and this is about understanding the audience and what they care about. A lot of uh, kind of tradespeople, at the end of the day, they have a few tip bits in their van that they need to go and take to the tip and pay to mm. dump, not dump, whatever, whatever you call it, pay to get rid of it. They could have some kind of waste bin where people can, if they're using the tile shop, can put their little tip bits in there so they don't have mm -hmm. to pay to get, to get rid of it. So that could be another thing to attract them. And it's all about understanding the audience and like, yeah. like what they care about. That was what I kept saying to, yeah. saying to the guy I was speaking to. He like he's been a tiler for thirty years, so he knows all the challenges, the problems, the yeah. things that they want, and yeah. comes up with ideas to help. You them. saying about like some kind of data capture? One of my thoughts for a business like this is setting up like a basic CRM system. So that sounds scary, Lloyd. An acronym. Oh uh, yeah, that okay. sounds scary for a small so, business. Uh, yeah, sorry. So let's say this in normal words. <laughs> um, make notes on your customers. Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so basically, I think something as simple as when a new customer comes in, you ask them for an email address or phone number and you just write whatever notes and this will this will develop as you go. You'll find out what's useful. But whatever notes, maybe you just note down what they bought and so you type up this many packets of this or, yeah. or if they're like <laughs> someone who buys packets. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if there's someone who buys high-end tiles and, oh, that's that kitchen fitter that, that, that buys the high-end stuff and mm. they charge quite a lot. They do really high-quality work. And there's going to be the other spectrum of like, oh, that's the guy that's just starting out. Like he's quite often looking for deals because he he doesn't charge much. He's just getting started. So he'll probably be working on the, the lower-cost tiles and that kind of thing. I think making little notes like that. So when, with those examples, right, say you've got this, you've got this offer as a supplier, you've got hold of these really high quality tiles and you can't believe the quality of them. You're like, bloody hell, it's the first time we've used this supplier. These are amazing. Then you've got your notes of the high-end tile buyers. Mm -hmm. That Oh, we've got Steve, Gary, Julie and Tim who like buy our highest end tiles. And you just send a text to all of them that saying- That could be a campaign. Like, that could be a small campaign Yeah, exactly. Itself. Like new offer- uh, blah, 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 tiles, highest quality tiles we've ever supplied. You tried those tiles uh, before. Yeah, <laughs> they're, uh. they're the premium ones. Or there's the other thing of like, say you get delivered a load of tiles and they're all they're that some of them are broken and stuff. Yeah, and you actually get a refund, but the supplier is like, oh, don't bother sending them back if they're broken. So you're just stuck with these half broken tiles. It's going to be the guys at the <laughs> lower end. The guys outside in that the bins. Will, no, no, but <laughs> they'll be willing to go through a pack of twenty tiles, and there's seven couple, in there yeah. they can use. Yeah. And they'll go, oh, 50p a box of these tiles, Tim, and you can use these yeah. on your next job. And I think having notes, you'll get to know customers and get to know who you would want to contact with certain deals and that kind of thing, which will really have a compound effect over time. At first, you'll have five customers in there and you'll be like, oh, this isn't very helpful. But in two years time, you're going to have 300 customers and you're going to be able to send a text once a month and get four people go, oh, great, I'll pop in later. I think this reinforces an important point smaller businesses underestimate the power of data. Hmm. I think a lot of businesses like this will be thinking, oh, there's no point capturing their 
contact details and writing notes and things. But this proves that that's valuable. Yeah. Like you can then filter those types of customers and do individual campaigns. Mm -hmm. Could be a text-based campaign, like you said. Could be an email marketing campaign. Could be a, like a direct phone call campaign yeah. that you could do to tell them about that offer that you've got. And you're more likely to convert customers because you're mm -hmm. using data to inform who you're targeting with that campaign. And bigger businesses with bigger budgets have these complex CRM systems. They'll note down every interaction with that customer. They'll be able to go back every conversation they've had with them, everything they've ever bought. But when you've got no budget, you can start small. Like I said, you can literally be writing down names, contact details, and just write what they've bought or a yeah. note that you like, oh, he likes purple tiles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like you can start small and don't make it a complex yeah. thing. He likes burgers with on likes tiles. Burgers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the <laughs> tiles. And then you go, hang on, we got enough for a burger and tile night on Wednesday now because we've got all these guys that like burgers and tiles. Yeah. What do you think of this idea? You ready for this one? I'm ready. The pyramid scheme that's not a pyramid scheme. Sounds dodgy. <laughs> okay, if I'm no, 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 no. So I'm more thinking of like an affiliate scheme yeah. where, you know, tilers and tradespeople tend to know other tilers and tradespeople. Mm -hmm. So why don't you ha create some kind of affiliate scheme? You know, like the, the, the most basic level is thinking of like when you go to McDonald's and you've got that thing that fills out your, when you, you get your sixth coffee for you or whatever. Yeah. You could have something where, right, if you bring in X amount of, you know, for every five new tilers you bring in, we'll take off 20% of all of your future mm. purchases with us is, you know, or we give you X amount coupon worth this much. I or, think it could be simple. As like well. genuinely it could, it could be like, Oh, if you send someone in and they say they've your come name, from you, we'll put it in a CRM we'll, system. We'll give you 10% of anything they spend. Yeah. So, so you can make money from in, recommending. Be like, oh, you've got, you've got 35 pound credit. Cause you introduced that Stevie spent 350 quid yeah. on tiles. And if you think by introducing one person over a period of years, You'll, you'll save a load of money. What about if you introduce even more people than that? Yeah, it's working out the lifetime value of these customers because sometimes smaller businesses with no budget are reluctant to do these kind of things because they think, what, give yeah. away 10% of a new order? But the reality is they're going to spend X amount over the 10 years that they're going to shop with you and it's 100% going to be worth that 10% discount that you're giving to yeah. whoever referred them. Um, it's just thinking creative, isn't it? It does make you think creatively when when you haven't just got money to throw at something, you do start to think of think outside the box. Yeah. Is there uh, any more ideas that you've got? <sighs> burgers, really? Yeah, um, I mean you've kind mainly. of uh, milked that one a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mil milkshakes. Yeah. Um, I one other thing I just think um for this in particular, thinking about like where your customers are and where you can have conversations and get their attention for something like this like the local networking events that do like breakfasts uh and there's yeah. like 20 people in a room there is always like a plumber a tiler a kitchen fitter mm. someone like that in there and i just think you can be guest at these groups for free for the first time yeah if i was starting a business like that i'd be like i'm gonna find the 12 networking meetings Try in this out. area i'm gonna go to everyone once me as a guest 20 people each time yeah i'm gonna have my sole thing is find that kitchen fitter or that plumber. Just make sure I at least have a conversation a with them. And I've got this enticing offer that I know if he doesn't remember anything about me, I can at least say, oh, there's offer. If if you want a Phoenix job, 25% off your first purchase. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever the offer is, burgers on your tiles. Mm. Um, and, you know, do that for six weeks and you end up meeting 15, 20 kitchen fitters yeah. or plumbers i think it's just those tactics of it's building up all these different things you're just going to get a handful more customers over the next few months and that's going to start building your customer base yeah i've got one final one there's a really amazing guy on linkedin called chris walker this is my new mm -hmm. i'm a new fanboy of him he talks a lot about sales especially in b2b so this is more focused on sort of b2b businesses yeah but um especially in the current climate uh, lots of people are looking to attract new customers, but he he did a video the other day talking about the importance of re-engaging your current sales pipeline. Yeah. Like, it, and this is for probably people that are a bit further along or more advanced that may have a CRM system, already logged a lot of opportunities and customers that have come to them that they maybe haven't worked with. Rather than trying to attract loads of new customers, it won't cost you anything to look at your the data you currently have from previous opportunities that you've pitched that maybe didn't work out and actually get back in touch with them, maybe with a new kind of offer or a new opportunity or some way that you can mm -hmm. add value for them 
rather than trying to fill up your sales pipeline with loads more opportunities, look yeah. at what you've already got there. Because they've already shown a sign of interest. They're probably further along their customer journey, mm. had more intent to buy with you. You're not trying to convince them as much. They were convinced in a, in a kind of way before. Also with re-engaging people that you've already had some kind of relationship with previously, most businesses develop over time. So they you might sell a wider range of products. You might have different services that you now offer. And if perhaps maybe they've been a customer or maybe they were just talking about being a customer last year with your wider range of products or with your different services or with your uh, higher level of service because you've developed as a business, it might actually now be the time that they would do business with you. Yeah. So it's like, oh, by the way, Tim, when we spoke to you last time, we didn't do this. We now do this. And here's some details. And it's like, oh, right. God, if you did that last year, we'd work with you last yeah. year. But yeah, you don't let's know have until- a chat. Yeah. Um, so I think it is if you're a developing a growing business or you're improving things, then it does highlight opportunities where you can re-engage people with yeah. with some better stuff for them. There is a lot of good ideas that anchors can hopefully try from this episode. Go Some on. are weird than others. And if you want to sell tiles, you've hit the jackpot, haven't you, today? Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you don't sell tiles, just re-listen to this. And every time you hear tile, just put your product or service yeah. in that gap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice <laughs> graphic design and burgers <laughs> <laughs> see it works for anything oh lovely well yeah thanks everyone for listening remember please do leave us a review if you found this interesting um it really helps the podcast reach more people and it makes you a better person so, i heard that there's been a few people i've met and i thought they are amazing people and then later i found out they've left a review they left a review and, I was like, oh, that and the ones sense. that didn't are usually yeah. not very oh. nice yeah oh. yeah okay so, yeah. We will see you in In your your ears ears next week. Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor again. Just before you go, we want to take a second to talk about our sponsors, Adobe Express. Adobe Express enables anyone to quickly and easily create standout social graphics, logos, flyers, banners, and more on web and mobile. There are so many amazing features and benefits to using Adobe Express. You can choose from thousands of beautifully designed templates to inspire and get you started. You can quickly remove a background, convert JPEG to PNG, videos to GIF, merge videos, change video speeds, and more. Apply your brand to your content in just a tap and collaborate with your colleagues through shared templates and libraries. You'll also get access to the entire diverse, royalty-free Adobe Stock Photo Collection created by the world's best professionals and choose from over 20,000 licensed Adobe fonts, as well as their collection of curved typesets, grids, and exquisite font pairings. You can apply standout photo effects in seconds, discover easy bite-sized tips to get you started on the Learn tab, or connect on one of our creator community spaces to stay close to our team and fellow users. Now that's a lot of features to get your teeth into. Click the link in the description of this episode to give Adobe Express a go today. And we'll see you next week on the Business Anchors Podcast.